Hi friends, my name is Miss Sykes and I am a first grade Title I reading teacher here in Central Ohio. Last time we were together we were talking about digraphs. We talked about CH, SH, and TH. Today we're going to continue talking about digraphs with part two of that lesson. And we're going to be talking about WH, PH, and CK. So to get started today, friends, for our lesson you're going to need your ears. Obviously you always need those ears to listen and follow along. We are also going to need your computer, iPad, or something you can complete the seesaw activity on at the end. All right? So let's review what we talked about last time. What is a digra digraph? Remember, di means two, and graph in this case means letter or word. So it's two letters that make one sound. Normally, when we have a letter, it, each letter makes its own unique sound, and those letters work together to form a word. When we have a digraph, we have two letters that are working together to make one sound, so they're no longer making their original sounds, but they're making a brand new sound because they're working as a team. The digraphs we talked about last time were CH, which says TH, as in cheese, SH, which says SH, as in shiny, and TH, which says TH, or TH, as in three. Today we're going to be talking about WH, which says W, PH, which says F, and CK, which says so last time we focused on the first three, this time we're working on the last three. These are very common digraphs that you see in words a lot. We'll kind of break down the sound each one makes, give you some example words, and then I'll be giving you some sounds to put together to form that word as we sort of blend those together so that way you can hear the sounds and see the words as they're being formed. We'll also talk about where each of these digraphs fit in a word, whether you normally see at the beginning, in the middle, or at the end. So let's start with WH. WH says WHO. So WH actually says the same sound as W by itself. You can almost pretend like that W or that H is just not there at all. When we see WH together, we can think, I don't really hear the H in WH. We just hear the WHO in words like whisker, whale, or wheel. If we look at these examples, we can notice that the WH is coming at the beginning. WH is very frequently found at the beginning of a word. We also see WH at the beginning of many of our question words. What, where, when, why. And so we'll do some of those examples together. Um, but WH is usually known for question words and almost always comes at the beginning. All right, friends, so I'm going to be showing you some letters. I will say the sound that that letter makes, but I'm going to give you a beat to look at it by yourself to see if you can come up with the sound before I do, okay? W, E, P. W, E, P. Whip, very good. W, E, P, whip. So if we look, friends, we can see that the word whip has four letters there, W, H, I, P. But if we listen to the sounds, it only has three sounds. W, E, P. That's because we have that digraph at the beginning, that W, H. Remember those two letters are making one sound together. So we wouldn't say W, HIP or W, HIP. We just say whip. Hello, Amelia. Let's do another one. W, E, N. W, E, N. When, very good. So when is another one of those question words. Remember W, H is often seen with our question words. But when we see the word when, we know we're asking um, about a time or a date. So in this case, we're looking at a calendar. W, E, N, when. Good, let's do one more W, H example. And then we'll look at our next digraph. W, E, CH. W, E, CH. Which, very good. So which is another question word. Which one of those answers is correct. And if we look, there's something really special about this word. We know that there's the digraph WH here at the beginning. But if we look at the end, there's another digraph in this word. The letter CH is one of the digraphs we talked about last time. And we know that the, those two letters together say ch, 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 
as in chicken or cheese. So if we look at this word, it really only has three sounds, w, i, ch. But there's five letters because we have the two separate digraphs, each making their own sounds. And then we have the i in the middle. Awesome job, friends. Let's look at our next digraph. Our next digraph is ph. The, letters, the letter p says p and the letter h says h. But when we put them together, we get a brand new sound and that sound is f. So PH actually makes the same sound as the letter F. But when we see it in a word, it can sometimes be difficult to remember that P and H work together because the sound that they make together is so very different than the sound sounds that they make separately. But we can also think about some example words that might help us remember that PH says f. These are words like phonics, phantom, or dolphin. Now, what I want to draw your attention to here, friends, is that PH does not always come at the beginning of the word. In fact, PH can come at the beginning, the middle, or the end of a word. And we'll see some of those examples as we practice together. We see that in a word like phonics, the PH is at the beginning, and it's still saying phonics. But in the word dolphin, it's here in the middle of the word. Dol in. So no matter where it is in the word, it will always make the same sound. And we can actually see it in the word digraph as well, where it comes in right at the end there. So it can also come at the end of the word and it still says that exact same sound. All right, let's look at some examples together. G, er, a, G, er, a, f. G, er, a, f. Graph. Nice job. Now, this one was a little tricky because it had four sounds instead of three. But a lot of our pH words tend to be a little bit longer. They don't just have the three sounds. Or the pH comes somewhere in the middle, or in this case, at the end of the word, which can sometimes make it tricky to look at examples. But we know what a graph is, right? We've made graphs in school, we use them in math. Um, and in this case, the pH is coming at the very end of the word. <laughs> we hear that sound at the end. Good, let's do another example. <laughs> o, N. <laughs> o, N. Phone, excellent. Now that one was a little bit different too. Um, if you notice, if we go back a couple of slides, we can see that we kind of have a space here. We have P-H-O blank E. The reason I put the O and the E up together is because they are working together. We know that when an E comes at the end of a word like this, it's gonna head back over and chill with our other vowel and make it say its name. So when we have an E at the end of the word, it is going to be silent, we're not gonna say it. We don't say phony or phone, but that E is just there to tell that vowel in the middle that it should say its name, it should say its long, strong sound. So in this case, it's going to say O, F O, N, phone. But we're really focusing on the digraph here. In this case, the pH is coming at the beginning of the word, F -f 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 own. Excellent, let's do one more example with pH, and then we'll do our last digraph, CK. E, er, s, f, e, er. This is a tricky one. Sphere, good job. A sphere is a 3D circle. It would be the shape of a ball or something you would roll on the ground. I'm trying to see if I have an example here. Um, I don't see anything that's spherical sitting right around me, but remember it's that shape of a ball, sort of a 3D circle. In this case, the pH is coming near the beginning, but it's not the first sound. The first sound here is S. S. Then we have the pH, S -s 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 sphere. And we have that silent E at the end. We also have an R controlled vowel, meaning the E is saying something close to its name, but it is also kind of saying the R sound as well. Awesome job, friends. Let's look at our last digraph. Our last digraph here is CK. Now CK comes almost exclusively at the end of words. You will sometimes see it in the middle of a word, 
but it is always going to be a closing sound. It's never going to come at the beginning. Now you might hear the sound k, which is what ck says at the beginning of a word, but it will either be c or k. It won't be both of them together. So ck is one of my favorite digraphs because c says k and k also says k. So when you put them together, what do they say? K. Very good. So they just take those sounds and they both say the same one, so they're just going to say it together at the same time. We can see it in words like whack, which also has the wh digraph in it, pluck, or backpack. Now backpack is one that has it at the middle and the end. The ck digraph shows up twice. This is also a compound word, meaning that back is a word and pack is a word, and we can smush them together to make a new word, backpack. But again, we're listening for that ck sound, k k k. We're going to do some examples together and then I'll walk you through your seesaw, okay? All right, so our CK sound, remember that CK is always going to be at the end in our examples here today. D, a, k, d, a, k. Duck, really good job. Duck, d, a, k. S, a, Sock. Sock. Really good job. Again, with that CK sound right there at the end. Let's do one more CK example. N. E. K. N. E. K. Neck. Really good job. So your neck. Again, that CK is at the end. It is still saying it's K sound. This word has four letters, but only three sounds. Remember that digraph is two letters that make one sound. All right, friends, so let's rate our understanding of this lesson. If you're over here at five stars, rocking and rolling, you know what WH says, you know what PH says, and you know what CK says, and you can read them in words, then you are right on track. You can head on over and do our seesaw activity. If you're somewhere in the four or maybe three star range where you feel like I know what WH, PH, and CK say, but I sometimes need a little bit of help sounding them out in words, then I would suggest practicing with a grown up or an older sibling to maybe read some words before you practice doing that seesaw on your own. And if you're over here in the two or one star range where you're feeling like I'm not even sure what WH, PH, and CK say, or perhaps I don't know what a digraph is at all, then I would really recommend going back and watching this video again. I would also recommend going back and watching our first digraph video again before trying to do the seesaw activity, okay? That'll just make sure that you're really ready to go and prepared to do that um, with us today, all right? So for your seesaw activity today, similar to the one we did last time, you have a word bank over here with three words in it. Your choices are where, duck, and phone. And you need to fill in the word to the correct sentence. You need to drag it over and put it in the correct sentence. Then you're going to click the microphone button and record yourself reading each one of these sentences so you know that you didn't just guess or match the pictures, okay? Make sure that your sentence makes sense and think about which digraph you're using while filling in those words. Awesome job today, friends. You did amazing. Rock on, my superstars, and I will see you all next time, okay? Bye!